Hello everyone and welcome back to Flight Sim 2020 where I'm going to take a look at the DC Designs Concorde. Yes, I decided to get it. I tried to fly the Kolimala Concorde and X-Plane 11 in order to dissuade myself from getting yet another Concorde, but I decided that I couldn't live without uh, Concorde in Flight Sim 2020 if it was available, so here it is. And yeah, the Kolimala Concorde is very nice and it is a study level Concorde. I went through the Colin Dark startup, it was very nice. It's uh, wonderfully detailed and we'll see how this one is. Uh, the DC Designs Concorde uh, they uh, promote as their most complicated plane so far and I believe it, it would have to be, uh, but I don't believe they state outright that it is study level. Uh, so we, we'll, let, we'll see how it goes. I'll make comparisons unavoidably, uh, unavoidably. And liveries, we've got four, two British Airways, one Air France and one Singapore Airlines. And uh, the maximum takeoff weight here is 408,000 uh, pounds. We max out the fuel here. Uh, we can push it above, but for some reason the payload gets to be 140, you see. So if we have max fuel, uh, we need to uh, reduce the payload in order to compensate. But I'm going to be flying from Fort Lauderdale to JFK, so that's not... Uh, maximum range sort of deal. Unlike the Kolimata Concorde, it doesn't have a real utility to help you figure out how much fuel you need to load. Um, technically, the Concorde has a maximum weight on landing. Well, most airliners do. So that sort of utility will help. And so what I'm going to do is, well, that pushes the CG out of the limit. The CG management is a huge thing on the Concorde. We'll see. So for now, I'll uh, pack in 77% like that and we'll have partial payload and we'll still be pretty heavy. So we'll go like that for this flight. There's gonna be a first impression sort of flight. I am not going to do the cold and dark startup. I'll save that for a different flight and a different video. Well, uh, okay, this eye point is pretty good. Our visor is currently up. It's actually on that slot. Let me just see. Um, it, it calls that the flaps lever, which is good. The Concorde doesn't have flaps, so we can use the flap. Oh, it's adjusting now. I didn't touch anything. It just uh, read where the flaps location is. I guess it was still loading that up. Um, the autopilot panel up here is a little bit overweathered. Uh, I think uh, that could be reduced probably a little bit. Uh, that is the overhead panel right there. There are preset sort of locations, control 1, control 2, control 3, control 4 for the FMS, control 5, even closer, control 6, uh, probably more of the front panel than I really need, control 7, I think it went automatically reset to half fuel, control 8 is up there, control 9, I'd rather have more of the engineer panel, like two of them for the engineer panel, um, if we're going to do the full start procedure, if that's possible. Uh, so, yeah, because a lot of it is done here. Some of the uh, this is familiar. Some of it's a little bit different than what I'm used to with the Kolimala Concorde. Uh, so we'll see in what state it's in. This is supposed to be version 1.0 of this plane. And I might actually uh, do a sort of... Uh, run through of both of them to see how it compares but for now like I said I'm not going to do the startup obviously we've already started up so we can adjust the nose using the flaps lever so okay this is as far as I can zoom into this plane right now Well, uh, the exterior model seems to be fairly good. Yeah, I mean, certainly, I think the best Concorde exterior I've seen. But I'll have to use the drone camera to get closer or something like that. Okay, uh, well, we'll have it here for now. Okay, let's see how it flies without further ado. So, uh, throttle up. The gauges are a little bit different. 
than what I'm used to as well. And let me push the throttle all the way up. Uh, it seems like we do have to toggle the afterburner. Like the stop planes. And they turn off when you throttle down. They don't turn off by the throttle. And then when you throttle up again, they don't come back on. You have to activate them again. So that's the thing. Also, uh, unless I'm mistaken, my eye point... Okay, so the default eye point seems to be a little bit low, but when you do control one, it brings you up to a better position. Okay, up we go. Uh, it seems to need extra speed to get off the run, uh, or to rotate in particular. Well, we've got lift. Okay, gear up. There's the internal gear sound. Nose up. Interesting look to the interior of the visor there. Okay, we're ascending a pretty high angle. Uh, let's see. Uh, we're keeping to 250, actually admirably well. I'm off of afterburner. I've got to throttle up to max without the afterburner. Oh, right, we only have... 59% uh, fuel because it, uh, uh, I don't know what it reset to, but it sure isn't where I left it. Uh, considering we're not topped off, we're not at a full load, it's pretty reasonable. Pretty reasonable to be climbing at a uh, good rate with this at this speed. Uh, I think the Kolimata Concorde is a little bit more sluggish than this is. Or this is a little bit more brisk. Uh, there's an auto trim active. I'm not, it, it's fighting against my trim actually. So there's some sort of flyby wire. Which doesn't seem right. I think there was some rudimentary thing, but I don't think it would have auto-trimmed like this. Nice sound. Inside I would expect it to be louder, I think. But that could just be done in the settings. Okay, well, uh, let's see how the autopilot does. And in particular, whether it can automatically activate the afterburner, too. Uh, boy, it takes a lot to turn this thing. Okay. And setting the altitude. Okay. So, all that's good. Let's acquire 32,000 feet. Okay. Alright, and let's see if it can adjust our... Oh, it should have got a lot of angle of attack there. Uh, adjust our heading properly. Seems that way. That's interesting, the lights that I associate with the afterburner down there are apparently not the lights that have to do with the ad burner. Okay. Well. There's also not the center of gravity indicators on the Mach meter. And I don't actually see a center of gravity. Well, if that center of gravity indicator is correct, we our center of gravity is not even on the scale. It's uh, off scale or high. I mean, above 50 there. So... I don't know what to make of that, actually. Okay, we are close to Mach 1, and it's not really holding the throttle. <laughs> uh, let's just go ahead and pass Mach 1, then. Oh, now it uh, throttled down, okay. Uh, no, no, 
let's uh, acquire a higher speed here. Okay. Now it does have the afterburner on. I didn't have to toggle that separately. Normally, I like to fly without autopilot, but the Concorde is one exception, though I think this one might fly smoothly. We'll have to see on another occasion. I wanted to test the autopilot this time. Oh, uh, okay, there we go. The maximum auto throttle is only 400. Okay. That's sort of interesting. Okay, we need to go higher then. We, they'll be very inefficient to be stuck here. Let's just go to 50,000 and see what kind of vertical speed it uses to get there. Let me see, yoke visibility. Uh, it doesn't have the elapsed time and chronometer functioning. Uh, oh, I guess we have to do it manually. Yeah. I guess we have to turn it on manually, okay. Oh, that's fair enough, I suppose. I'm gonna turn off the auto throttle. And just manually... Throttle as high as I can. It doesn't seem to do any better anyway. Okay, now it's getting past 400 knots. Oh, we've got the the sound barrier. It, it does sort of have the crack when you get right at the edge. So silence up here. A little bit of a crack. We're at Mach 1.4 now. This seems fairly reasonable overall. I like having a co-pilot, I'll say that. Animated co-pilot too. Yeah, I'll have to do a more in-depth comparison when it comes to the startup procedure. Overall, I think the climb and the way it's operating is more or less what I would expect it to do. I'll have to double check, check the fuel consumption at sea level when it comes to having the afterburners on though. Once we get to super cruise, it should be something like 5 uh, on the, those dials for the fuel consumption. That translates to uh, 5, 000, 5 tons uh, per engine per hour. It can be less than that too. But right now it's 10, which makes sense with the afterburners on. We also didn't really see the onset of aerodynamic drag as we went through the transonic region. But then maybe, maybe the autopod just controlled that better. Okay, we've reached 50,000 feet, Mach 1.6. It should be able to get to Mach 2 at 55,000 feet, we'll see. I still have the afterburner on. It should probably be accelerating more with the afterburner on at this point. So just uh, taking a look around. Quite weathered. Well, some things are weathered. I'd actually expect the fabric to be more stained and weathered than, like, the metal. This is, uh, I mean, I don't know. Okay, well, Mach 1.8. Yeah, my expectation is at this point we could turn off the, the afterburner and it would still accelerate. Anyway, we're getting closer. It's interesting that uh, on the afterburner our fuel consumption is like at about 7, 000, uh, 7 tons per hour per engine. 
Well, I'll see what happens when we take it off of Afterburner. It would be real fancy if the co-pilot actually... We add the sounds, too, of the co-pilot readouts that we have with the Kolimata Concord, like them announcing Mach 1 and Mach 2. Though that can get irritating after a while, I suppose. We're still off the coast of Florida. Still got a ways to go. We're currently at a ground speed of 1,111 knots. Okay, well, Mach 2, I'm going to take it off of the afterburner. And I'm at full thrust without afterburner right now. The fuel consumption seems to have gone down to about 4-ish, so that tracks, more or less. We are still accelerating. So yeah, uh, 55,000 feet, uh, Mach 2 is fine. Okay. And I'll probably have to pull back the throttle. The fact that the indicated airspeed is above 550 doesn't make sense to me though. It should be less than that. I would expect it to be about 500. So that's strange to me. It doesn't seem to be going too much above Mach 2. So I, I can just leave it at full throttle I think and it won't overspeed. Anyway, autopilot seems to have it pretty stable, and we'll see whether we can land it properly. The CG is indicating that it ought to be, what, between 59.5 and 61 point something percent, but the actual indicator isn't anywhere near the forward and aft locations. And again, the Mach meter is supposed to have a CG limit thing as well. As far as trimming the fuel properly, I don't know if that's necessary or not. Uh, for the Kolimata Concorde and X-Plane 11, the flight engineer handles that automatically or you can. It might be on automatic right now and I just don't know it, but I don't know how to verify that it's trimmed properly or not because mm, normally you'd look at the CG indicator and it's not on that. It's not, it doesn't seem to be trimmed properly, but it's not having any deleterious effects. Why hasn't it killed me, basically? I, I always try to see if the plane is going to kill me. No indication of that yet. Well, let's take a look at the exterior view. It's too quiet, though. <laughs> Wow, the, the Mach cone is really far back. There's any, anything beyond that and it's silent over here. Well, uh, there's still some background sound. 6.15, jeez. Mach uh, 2.07 right now. If it gets too much beyond that, I'll probably throttle back. It was supposed to be 2.02 .02 is the limit. Okay, we are roughly halfway through our flight. We will be over part of North Carolina that I always clip on these particular test flights with supersonic planes up the eastern seaboard. Uh, hope nobody minds or anything. It does look here like there are built-in checklists that will be helpful for the engine start. Okay, we certainly should be descending at this point. So let's see how an automated descent will work. Except I'll control the throttle. Um, actually, uh, let's have it acquire the auto throttle at 400, let's see. So yeah, I, I would say that the interior could do with some work. That would be nice. Okay, down to Mach 1.4 and 41,000 feet. Still descending. 36,000 is basically where I break below Mach 1, then we turn into a normal airliner after that. As long as we hold uh, 400 knots, though, on the autothrottle, we'll be above Mach 1. 
And from the outside, now the mock cone is a little bit more generous as far as where we get sound. And there is New Jersey. This particular flight along the eastern seaboard is about an hour long flight with the Concorde. So, indicated airspeed acquisition. Starting our descent to 18,000 feet. We're only 75 nautical miles away. We are doing this later than I ought to. Well, we are now firmly below Mach 1, so we are not overly disturbing residents of New Jersey, <laughs> at this point anyway. Take a closer look over the landscape. Of course, again, uh, Concord is not the plane to necessarily enjoy the flight sim scenery in, but we'll try and fly by uh, the landmarks of Manhattan on our way in. Not too sure the fuel gauge reading is quite correct when it reads like zero fuel consumed. Also, we're going to be landing heavy. Um, sure it's more than zero, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, at least the fuel gauge, contents gauge is ticking down, but not that often, actually. Okay, so out the window. JFK's on the other side. Whoops. Wrong one. JFK's on that side. Let's go outside and see. There it is. Okay. We will land there momentarily. Oh, we're going too fast right now. And there's Manhattan coming up. Okay, I'll just take manual control now. Nice beeping. That's just a good beep. Oh, before it causes me trouble, let me see if I can turn off the electric trim. Let's see. Okay, yes. Oh, no, it's still trimming. Nope, it's still trimming. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I have to turn off the artificial feel or the auto stab. I'm not sure. I need bridge replacements. I'm sure there's a freeware pack for that. I don't want the photogrammetry bridge. Hey, along the Empire State Building. I'll say this version is a lot easier to fly at low altitudes than I would expect it to be. <laughs> but then again, uh, it, it, we're also going rather fast considering I throttle down pretty much as far down as I can. You can see lever 2%. I can't throttle down much faster. There's the Statue of Liberty. Yeah, it's going to be hard to slow down with this. Uh, well, of course, we do have the reversers, so there is that. But I can't throw down any more than what I've got right now. Maybe there'll be more drag with the gear down and all. Okay, well, we should be safe to go for one notch of the visor and nose. Or oh, it's making a sound. I don't know what that sound necessarily refers to, that bridge needs help. Oh, I'm throttling up now. Okay, so it uh, does... Oh, it's lowering now. I guess maybe we're still too fast for the visor. 
Okay, now now it's feeling more concrete. I'm actually asking for permission, perhaps. Unprecedented. Nope, cruising right along here. Okay, well, I'm turning towards it. I don't know if I'm gonna get clearance or not. That's me. Three one left, huh? Okay. Uh, okay. This thing turns about what I, how I'd expect. It is not maneuverable. It's a little bit lighter on the touch than the one in X-Plane 11. Oh, they're telling me to go around. Alright, I'll go around. Dude. I've got to do this right for once. Here's a Concord going around. Oh, there's another Concord down there. <laughs> that guy got priority, apparently. Uh, there we go. Okay. I uh, probably went too far. Oh, that's another Concord. Everybody's flying Concord today. Where's the landing gear on this? Okay, I touched down. Ah! Okay, not great. Not great, not terrible. How's the thrust reversers? I didn't even get to check it. We slowed down pretty well. Um, well, I don't think my method of engaging thrust reversers is working right now, but that might just be a uh, key assignment. Okay. How's taxiing? Pretty easy. I'm not using much of the wheel authority right now. Oh, there's 747 over there. Doesn't have landing gear for some reason. Oh yeah, I better... I don't have any people telling me how far I need to go here. This doesn't seem like a gate fit for a... Uh, Concord. You guys sure about this? Okay, that's happy. Batteries! There we go. All right, so flight complete. Well, there you have it. The DC Designs Concord, my first flight in it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.